Ramon! Ramon! Well, guys, we got some more Brexit news here. And oh, my days, is it funny? By now, all of you likely know about the internal market bill that has the EU and Ramonas across Europe screaming from the rooftops because preparing for a no deal with laws is scary to these people, I guess. It would seem the EU are really worried that Boris Johnson is going to play hardball, which I suppose he could do, though it's not likely, and that has obviously got them screaming from the rooftops and trying to threaten a sovereign nation in the process. Last night, reports came out stating the EU would block food exports if we didn't make a deal because I I guess the EU is the only place on earth that buys and sells food. It is lunacy and rather funny considering that outcome there was part of Project Fear around a no-deal Brexit. So what are these Remainers saying now that the EU are planning to give them their worst nightmare and this time they can't actually blame it on Boris Johnson or the UK? Obviously they are likely going to say nothing the same as they did when the government decided to use Gina Miller's anti-Brexit court case against them, which I covered the other day and I still can't get over how funny that action is. But the Sun picked up on this shit show with the headline, EU threatens to block UK food exports if trade talks fail. Because yeah, that will really go down well in the individual EU nations whose businesses rely on this trade. The EU has threatened to block UK food exports if trade talks fail, claiming there were many uncertainties about the UK's animal hygiene regime. The statement was made earlier today by EU's chief negotiator Michel Barnier following the latest round of Brexit talks. Because obviously, they know they are in the shit, Boris is playing a little bit harder than they expected him to, and they really don't know what to do about it. Mr Barnier said that he needs more clarity if Britain was to receive the third country listing, entitling it to export animal products to the EU. The third country listing is made up of other countries such as Andorra, New Zealand, the USA and South Korea. So screaming Ramonas, there's no chlorinated chicken there, you're screaming and shouting was all for nothing. On the British side, there was surprise at the comments as the UK continues to apply EU standards, although it is understood the issue has been raised previously in the negotiations. A government spokesman said the right to export is the absolute basis for a relationship between two countries that trade agricultural goods, which is kind of common sense, but the EU don't care about that. They're desperate to get their own way and Boris Johnson needs to continue to stand firm because they actually have given him an ultimatum of when to stand down on this. It continues, it's a license to export and entirely separate from the issues of food standards. It would be very unusual for the EU to go down this route and deny the UK listing, which is once again the EU acting in bad faith. Let's just scrap the withdrawal agreement now so there can be none of this screaming and shouting from the Remainers about how this government is breaking the law. The EU are taking the piss. At the end of the day, it should be our right to do what we want and fuck it off now. Number 10 has insisted that a post-Brexit free trade deal with the EU is still possible despite the impending threat of legal action from Brussels. Following a stormy meeting in London on Thursday, the Commission warned the UK was putting trade talks at risk and said it would not be shy of taking legal action. Though I really don't see what legal action it can take at the end of the day, the government is entitled to do what it wants. And that shit is enshrined in UK law as we found out last year. Well, I say the government, I actually mean Parliament, which is essentially the government when you consider they've got an 80-seat majority. In Brussels, the European Commission's chief spokesman, Eric Mama, said they would consider what action to take if at the end of the month the UK had still not withdrawn the provisions in the internal market bill. We have set a deadline for the UK. We are going to take this step by step. We are going to wait for the reaction of the United Kingdom by that deadline, he said. We will consider next steps once we have reached that particular bridge. So there is the EU again, threatening a sovereign nation, thinking they can tell us what time we've got to do this, and if we don't, they're going to do this and that. Boris Johnson, pull your finger out of your ass, grow a spine, and tell these cunts to fuck off. The European Commission has given the UK until the end of September to drop legislation enabling ministers to override provisions in the Brexit withdrawal agreement relating to Northern Ireland. The Prime Minister's official spokesman, however, reiterated the government's position that the provisions in the UK market internal bill remain critical to the preservation of the Northern Ireland peace process, which actually might be true when you factor in what I covered the other day from the Northern Irish politician who shit all over Nancy Pelosi for butting her nose in something she has no idea about. Out. He said the UK would continue to strive for an agreement and called on the EU to show greater realism. We have engaged constructively with the EU throughout this process. We have negotiated in good faith and we will continue to do so, the spokesman said. In my opinion there, he's hinting at the fact that the EU most certainly hasn't. 
We do still believe that there is a deal to be reached. We will work hard to achieve it. Yeah, we know the Conservatives think there's a deal to be achieved because they'll likely sell us out. It's what political parties do at the end of the day. What we have been asking for is more realism on the EU side about what it means for the UK to have left the EU and to once again be a sovereign nation. Which is exactly why Boris Johnson needs to continue down this route, tell the EU to fuck off, because at the moment, Brexit it seems is about the only thing he has a partial spine on. And it finishes up here with a bunch of bullshit from Irish ministers who are just the puppets of the EU, so we won't bother reading that, but this bit is particularly funny. Meanwhile, Gordon Brown joined fellow former Prime Ministers Theresa May and Sir John Major in condemning the government's plans, describing it as a huge act of self-harm. Let me tell you what would be a huge act of self-harm listening to you irrelevant old tosspots who do not have the support of the public and likely didn't when you left office. Let's be honest, was Gordon Brown ever even elected? Oh sorry, I missed a bit at the end here that is worth pointing out. However, some Tory Brexiteers were urging Mr Johnson to go even further and to abandon the withdrawal agreement altogether, which is something I have been calling for also. Former Minister Steve Baker said, I think we should now be willing to repudiate the whole treaty on the basis of the EU's bad faith, which in my mind is undoubted, which when you look at the evidence is undoubted, never mind just in your mind. Now I would say I think it's rather incredible that the EU are doing this, but let's be honest, it's the fucking EU. This is the sort of shit they do when the shit's hitting the fan and their back's against the wall. They are really worried that Boris Johnson will maintain his position and if there's a no deal Brexit, they will lose control through the withdrawal agreement. Hopefully, like Steve Baker said, Boris just sacks it off and we just leave right now, no fuck given, though I highly doubt that is likely to happen. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies Mr Verhofstadt against their empires, <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>